Good evening, everyone. I am Les Wong, President of San Francisco State University. Those of you in academic regalia may remove your caps if you so choose. Also, for everyone's convenience, we ask that you please, please turn off your cell phones. Thank you. As President of San Francisco State University, it gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you to our 2015 Honors Convocation. I am fortunate to lead San Francisco State, and I take great pride in what we accomplished at this great university. More than 100 of our finest accomplishments are sitting behind me on the stage this evening. All of these students have met the highest standards during their years here, rising to the challenges put to them by an outstanding faculty. They have enriched our lives, for education is a distinctly two-way process, and we trust that we have enriched their lives as well. We want our honor students to know that their achievements have been recognized, and so we have gathered here this evening at, at the end of the academic year to applaud them for their fine work and to wish them well as they prepare to leave. We trust that they are leaving with an education that has prepared them to inquire freely, to think and analyze independently, or as they have heard me say often, to own their own mind. And we trust that they are leaving with that distinctive feature of a San Francisco State University education that we cherish so deeply, the ability to apply their knowledge in ways that will improve and better the world around them. Representatives of the university community are here to join with us in this convocation. You will meet many of them as the evening proceeds, but please allow me to introduce some of them now. And will the following individuals please stand as I introduce them? Lola Hong, Vice President for Student Affairs. <laughs> Jennifer Summit, Dean of Undergraduate Studies. <laughs> Deborah Masters, University Librarian. <laughs> Berenice Lamarchand, President of the University Women's Association. Her members are this evening's official convocation greeters and the hosts of our reception at the Student Center later tonight. Our two stage marshals, John Carlos Perea, Assistant Professor of American Indian Studies, and Kimberly Tanner, Professor of Biology. I would also like to recognize our two faculty marshals, uh, Reen Dahl, Chair and Professor of Child and Adolescent Development. And Connie Lasowitz, Professor of Apparel Design and Manufacturing. <laughs> Business and community leaders often ask me, what is the key ingredient to the educational magic that happens at San Francisco State. My answer is well rehearsed and well heard. It's all about talent. As this audience knows well, we attract some of the most talented students in the world. Then we introduce those talented students to one of the world's finest teaching faculties who have come to San Francisco State out of a desire to make a real difference in the lives of our students. That intersection between student and faculty talent is what makes magic happen right here. To acknowledge that relationship, each year we ask the chief representative of the faculty, the chair of the Academic Senate, to address our honorees and our guests. When Trevor Getz joined San Francisco State's History Department in 2002, he was just two years removed from earning his PhD from the University of London. His passion for African history is infectious, and through his teaching and writing, 
he has ignited a similar passion in countless students. He is the author of Abina and the Important Men, a graphic novel textbook that teaches the history of West African slavery through the life story of a remarkable woman and slave. It won the American Historical Association's James Harvey Robinson Prize as the most outstanding contribution to the teaching and learning of history in 2014. Dr. Goetz has led the faculty of San Francisco State this past year as chair of the Academic Senate. In that role, he led the development of San Francisco State's new strategic plan, as well as many other initiatives. Indeed, his wisdom and good humor have become crucial institutional assets. Dr. Goetz is a first-rate teacher and scholar, but as with so many of our faculty at San Francisco State, that isn't enough. He lends his talents to making the community around him a better place. In short, he is a great citizen of this university. I am pleased to now present Dr. Trevor Goetz. The title of his talk tonight is The Mis Mismeasur Mismeasuring of the Citizen. Honorees, family, friends, colleagues, especially honorees, it is my privilege to be able to address you briefly on behalf of the faculty, your professors and advisors who have worked with you over these past months and years. You are here because your work, your essays and calculations and exams, have been evaluated and found to be superior. So congratulations there. You've now become quite used to academic evaluation, I would guess, having taken standardized and classroom tests since you were a small child. Bad news, you'll be similarly measured and gauged for much of the rest of your working life. Now here's something you may or may not know. As your professors, we're pretty consistently evaluated as well, most importantly by you. The teaching evaluation forms that you fill out every semester, really do matter, and many of us do whatever we can to get our high scores on your grades. We're also evaluated by the scholarly work we do, by the curricula we develop, and by the service that we give to local communities. And we're now being told that it's possible that the state of California and the federal government are dreaming up new ways to measure us by how many of our graduates get jobs and the income they make. So I'm trying to figure out which one of you is gonna be drafted in the NFL in a few months. I hope it's at least one of you. Of course, measuring itself is not a bad thing. Humans measure. Cognitive scientists tell us that there are three main ways that humans have of processing information. Comparison, categorization, and analogy. In other words, we have trouble describing individuals or things without reference to other individuals and things and how they differ or are similar. Moreover, the way we measure things often tells us a lot about our society. Yet over 30 years ago, evolutionary biologist Stephen Jay Gould wrote a book called The Mismeasure of Man. In the 1980s, by the way, it was okay to just say man, and women were kind of a subcategory. In the book, Gould, who is also a historian of science, explored the epidemic of pseudoscientific measuring of people that underpinned centuries of biological determinism and still justifies racist and sexist thought today. He looked at instruments and measures ranging from phrenology, measuring the bumps on the skull, to more contemporary intelligence quotients, or IQ tests. As the book progressed, Gould revealed how uh, societies use these instruments to justify uh, discrimination, segregation, and to squander human capital by ranking humans into a series of oppressed and disadvantaged groups supposedly scientifically proven to be inferior and deserving of subaltern status. Now keep in mind, all of this happened before the epidemic of standardized testing that plagues us today. Yet there are strong continuities to this legacy that stand out still in the way that the poor especially are vilified for their supposed inadequacies, while the wealthy are held up as paragons of virtue. This despite the fact that worldwide social science research shows us that great wealth is not a source of either good behavior or great happiness. 
in fact, quite often the opposite. The question before you, as highly qualified individuals entering, re-entering, or moving to new places in the workforce, is how will you want to be measured and how will you measure others? How important is one's income to their identity? How well does it measure their contribution to society? How significant is job rank or title? How useful is gross domestic product? Or should we turn instead, as the King of Bhutan has suggested, to calculating GNH, or gross national happiness, as a measure of well-being? Or artistic production? Or the ability of our society to harness creativity and serves the needs of the population? Such issues are not just abstract. They are significant, especially in the silicon plex in which we live. San Francisco and the Bay Area are changing, you may have noticed. And not all the changes that we see take into account happiness and creativity and stability and health, as well as the production of money. As a faculty, and I look at my colleagues, we espouse the idea that social justice-oriented measures are not contradictory to prosperity, but rather complementary. So if I may speak for my colleagues, some of them may tell me I made mistakes later, but if I may speak for them, I would like to conclude by urging you, go out and create prosperity and happiness and measure how much you have contributed to both. Do not yourselves become obsessed with the measures others place upon you, but know your own worth. And finally, become one of the dreamers who think up new and better ways to evaluate where we have been and where we are going as a society so that we may create communities that empower people rather than mismeasure them and relegate them to, to poverty or obscurity. Thank you. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Sue Rosser. Thank you, Senate Chair Goetz. Your thought-provoking remarks about the extent to which we are all measured or potentially even mismeasured throughout our education, our careers, and our lives really uh, make us think about our future and what we will be doing and why we are here. Moreover, thank you for the provocative questions you raised to challenge our graduates to think about how they want to be measured and how they will measure others in the future. Tonight, we are honoring students for their outstanding achievements at San Francisco State University. First, we will honor those students who were inducted as members of Phi Beta Kappa. Next, we will honor 92 undergraduate students who are graduating in the top 1.5% of the students from their academic colleges. Speaking of measurements, <laughs> um, most of them will graduate magna cum laude or summa cum laude. The third group includes 52 undergraduates who have been selected by their academic departments and programs to receive special recognition for excellence in their particular field. The final group includes six students who have been singled out to represent all of the graduating seniors in their respective colleges. Each of the six colleges along with the special majors program, is invited to select one outstanding student to represent all others in their area at the honors convocation here tonight and also comm at commencement tomorrow evening at AT&T Park. They are selected because of their outstanding academic achievements and other significant accomplishments that you will hear about throughout this evening. These six students seated here in the front row will receive the symbolic investiture of the hood at commencement ceremonies tomorrow evening. Phi Beta Kappa.
This year marks the 38th anniversary of the first installation of our Phi Beta Kappa chapter members at San Francisco State University. The president of the university chapter is Dr. Masahiko Minami, who is in the audience tonight. Dr. Minami, would you please stand? Ours is a university that stresses the liberal arts as the basis for all instruction. Phi Beta Kappa, the oldest honorary society in the United States, actually born the same year as this country, recognizes those students who have successfully demonstrated breadth and depth of study in the sciences, the humanities, and the behavioral and social sciences. The National Society of Phi Beta Kappa established Omicron of California at San Francisco State University 38 years ago in 1976. Since then, only 893 San Francisco State University students have met the requirements to be elected to Phi Beta Kappa out of a pool of more than 176,000 graduating students. As you might expect, the selection process is rigorous. I am proud to introduce the Phi Beta Kappa members who are able to join us tonight, who have been initiated into the Omicron of California chapter. I ask that each student please stand as I call your name and remain standing until all members are named. They are Jana Alfred, Miles Culpepper, and Yi Lin Lu. Please join me in congratulating these students for their outstanding academic achievements. I would now, you may be seated. I would now like to introduce the Dean of the College of Business, Linda Ubre who will present the faculty representatives and students accorded high academic honors from the College of Business. Good evening. I would like to introduce the chairs and faculty members representing the academic departments in the College of Business and ask them to remain standing until all faculty members have been introduced. They are Jean Wong, Accounting, Robert Salzman, Decision Sciences, Michael Potapan, Economics, Yuli Su, Finance, Colin Johnson, Hospitality and Tourism Management, Thad Yushowitz, Information Systems, Roblin Simeon, International Business, John Logan, Labor Studies, Ann Koch, Management, and Judy Strabel, Marketing. Please join me in giving this faculty a hand. Okay, you may be seated. As I introduce the honor students from the College of Business, I would ask that each student please stand and remain standing until all of the students from the category have been presented. Please hold your applause until all students have been called. Students graduating in the top 1.5% of the College of Business in order of their majors are in accounting, Natalie Nak Dong, Lily Faskin, Sanjaya Pratima, Amy Sharoth, Kim Tran, and Zhao Yang. In finance, Jinzi Dung, Omar Basim El Kurd, Juliana Karma, Tran Tra Pham, Daniel Sousa, Hawaii Tran and Christina Zeltzer. In hospitality and tourism management, Jiayin Li. In information systems, Tyrone Gudaturi and Mandy Sun. In marketing, Rhonda Chan, Bai Lin Go, 
Lindsay Leon, and Nicholas Olson. Please join me in congratulating these honorees. You may be seated. I would now like to present those students who've been selected by their departments for special recognition. Amy Sheroth, accounting. Please stand again. Let's stay standing until everyone's been called. Michael Patrick Randall, Decision Sciences. Daniel Sousa, Finance. Lamia Ramadan, Hospitality and Tourism Management. Tyroon Guduture, Information Systems. Eileen Gell Tunger, International Business. Joshua Harris, Labor and Employment Studies. Monique Domingo, Management. And Lindsay Leong, Marketing. Please join me in giving them a hand. You may be seated. As Provost Rosser mentioned, each of the colleges selects one student to receive the hood tonight on behalf of all of its graduates. I am very pleased to introduce this year's hood recipient from the College of Business, Daniel Sousa, who will receive his bachelor's degree in finance. Mr. Sousa entered San Francisco State as a freshman, pursuing his love of baseball and interest in finance. As a scholar athlete, he's been named to the prestigious California Collegiate Athletic Association All-Academic Team, the Capital One Academic All-District Baseball Team, and the Dean's List. In addition to his excellence in the classroom and on the field, Mr. Sousa's service to his teammates, college and university, has been exemplary. As a freshman, Mr. Sousa organized a fundraiser to help an injured teammate cover unexpected medical expenses. In subsequent years, Mr. Sousa has served as treasurer of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee and helped organize campus community service events, including the annual food drive and a dodgeball tournament to raise funds for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. In the summer, Mr. Sousa has coached youth sports camps in his hometown of Benicia. Even with this demanding schedule, Mr. Sousa also worked part-time for the University Athletic Department tutoring fellow athletes, a tradition he started in high school and as a teaching assistant in the College of Business. As a senior captain, he has mentored fellow athletes, encouraging a balanced commitment to sports and academics. After graduation, Mr. Sousa plans to work in finance and earn an MBA. His goal is to become the CFO of a, of a professional sports team and to create youth sports programs. Congratulations, Danny, on your success. We look forward to watching your bright future unfold. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dean Judith Munter, who will present the faculty representative and the students from the Graduate College of Education. Thank you very much, Dean O'Brien. The Graduate College of Education is the only college at San Francisco State University that is primarily a graduate school preparing students who already have their baccalaureate degrees to be professional educators and service providers. The Graduate College of Education offers one undergraduate degree, a Bachelor of Arts in Communicative Disorders within the Department of Special Education. This evening, representing the faculty from the Graduate College of Education's undergraduate program, we have Dr. Laura Epstein. Thank you for being here, Dr. Epstein. <laughs> the following student from the Department of Special Education, majoring in communicative disorders, is among those who are graduating with high academic honors. Elizabeth Thomas. Please join me in giving her a round of applause.
I would now like to present the student who has been selected by the department for special recognition. Isabella Elsa Firpo, Communicative Disorders. It is my pleasure to introduce Ms. Brina Miller, the undergraduate Hood recipient for the Graduate College of Education. She is graduating from the C Communicative Disorders Program with a Bachelor of Arts degree. Congratulations. Ms. Miller came to us from Sand Point, Idaho, by way of San Luis Obispo, where she worked for a few years before enrolling at the College of Marine. She transferred to SF State in 2012 and has been both a model student in the Communicative Disorders Program and a visionary leader working to develop an international focus in her field. In 2013, she was a recipient of the Gilman Scholarship, as well as a grant from the German Academic Exchange Service, which enabled her to be an exchange student in the German city of Tübingen for one academic year. This life-changing experience led Ms. Miller to work closely with the coordinator of the Communicative Disorders Program upon her return to SF State to begin developing several exchange programs that will be ready to be launched in the next academic year. Inside the classroom, Ms. Miller has distinguished herself by earning one of the highest GPAs in the 2014-15 class. Outside the classroom, she is a clinic aide at a local public elementary school where she collaborates with a graduate student in speech language pathology to provide speech language intervention to kindergartners whose, whose first language is Spanish. Recently, Ms. Miller was faced with a very difficult decision as she was simultaneously awarded a year-long Fulbright scholarship and offered to return to Germany, as well as acceptance into the master's program in communicative disorders here at San Francisco State. We are overjoyed that she has chosen to stay with us to continue her studies and become a speech language pathologist. Brina, we are so proud of you and we look forward to continuing to watch you grow as a graduate student here at SF State. Congratulations. I am pleased to now introduce my colleague, Kenneth Montero, Dean of the College of Ethnic Studies, who will now present the faculty representatives and honor students from the College of Ethnic Studies and from the special major category. Thank you, Dean Munter. I'm pleased to introduce the faculty, the department chairs and faculty from the nation's only College of Ethnic Studies in attendance tonight. Siri McDougall, Africana Studies. John Carlos Perea, American Indian Studies, here on stage. Grace Yu, Asian American Studies. Teresa Carrillo, Latina Latino Studies. Can we now thank those colleagues? You may now be seated. And we also welcome the baby's voice. The following student from the College of Ethnic Studies is among, uh, the following students from the uh, College of Ethnic Studies is among those graduating with the highest academic award uh, honors. In Latina Latino Studies, Emily Rodriguez, would you please stand? Thanks. 
I need to be seated. Departmental honors from the College of Ethnic Studies go to Anthony Albi Solomon, Africana Studies. If you please stand. <laughs> che Angelita Schull, American Indian Studies. <laughs> Glorica Ruvi Colonson, Asian American Studies. <laughs> Emily Rodriguez, Latina Latino Studies. You may now be seated, thank you. It is now my honor to introduce this year's Hood recipient for the College of Ethnic Studies, Emily Rodriguez. She's graduating with a bachelor's degree in Latino Latina Studies. Ms. Rodriguez has not only shown tremendous academic excellence, but she has done so while raising her son as a single mother, working part-time and attending San Francisco State as a full-time student. While at San Francisco State, Ms. Rodriguez has participated in multiple, multiple research projects that serve the Latino community of San Francisco. During the summer of 2013, she trained high school and community college students in conducting oral history interviews in the Mission District as part of an anti-gentrification project. She's also completed research for a history of Latinos in San Francisco project sponsored by the San Francisco Latino Historical Society and the San Francisco Planning Department. Ms. Rodriguez volunteers with the San Francisco Day Labor Program, a nonprofit non organization that connects workers with employers. She has served as a teaching assistant in the Department of Latino Latino Studies for the past two years and was in charge of leading a group discussion and tutoring students. This experience sparked her interest in becoming a teacher of ethnic studies. She's currently teaching a teaching assistant at a middle school for high needs youth in Visitation Valley and hopes, excuse me, plans to continue her studies, earn her PhD, and become an, a professor of ethnic studies. Emily, we wish you the best and look forward knowing that you will do those wonderful things that you've decided to accomplish. I'm now honored to introduce my colleague Alvin Alvarez, Interim Dean of the College of Health and Social Sciences, who will present the faculty representatives and honor students from that college. Thank you, Dean Montero. The department chairs and faculty representatives here tonight from the College of Health and Social Sciences are Reen Dahl, Child and Adolescent Development, Connie Ulasowitz, Consumer and Family Studies Dietetics, Carlos Davidson, Environmental Studies, Mary Beth Love, Health Education, Elaine Musselman, Nursing, Jackson Wilson, Recreation Parks and Tourism, Sonia Melara, Social Work, and Christopher Bettinger, Sociology and Sexuality Studies. Please join me in congratulating you. Those students accorded high honors from the College of Health and Social Sciences are, please rise and remain standing, in apparel design and merchandising, Frederica Gaken. We got a long list, so let's hold our applause here just a sec. <laughs> Casey Claire McGeary, in child and adolescent development, Isis Maniago Torres. Erica Romo, in nursing, Vivian Dominguez Diocano. Elaine, <laughs> I, I know, it's hard to keep in, isn't it? I, I, I get that, I get that. Not a problem. Elizabeth May Enriquez. Molly McDonald. Christina Nguyen. Kristen Ann Pinado. 
Jeanette Quintana. Woo! Suda Saravadan. Yeah! <laughs> Sarah Swain. Woo! Alyssa Jane Veloria. Woo! Gregory Matthew Zielinski. There, there's just no stopping my college, so, sorry. <laughs> in sociology, in a double major in humanities, Tobin Galang. In, in urban studies and planning, Irene Yuk Heyo. Please join me in congratulating these students. Our students here tonight who are being given special recognition by their respective departments are, please rise, Erica Romo, Child and Adolescent Development, Federica Gaken, Consumer and Family Studies Dietetics, Miguel Guerrero, Environmental Studies, Morgan Caitlin Ducey, Health Education, Melissa Estrada Diaz, Nursing, <laughs> Gregory Trevor Rice, Recreation, Parks, and Tourism, and Karina Almanza, Sociology and Sexual Stu Sexuality Studies. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm delighted to introduce this year's Hood recipient for the College of Health and Social Sciences, Nuruddin Shatini, as he prefers to be called Dino. This moment is not only for Dino, but also for his three-month-old daughter out there. <laughs> Dino is graduating with a bachelor's degree in sociology. Dino is a gifted student who is analytically sharp, intellectually curious, and passionate about learning. He is also a rousing leader and a formidable public speaker who is fiercely dedicated to both critical thinking and social justice. Dino's 10-year incarceration and re-entrance into civilian society has given him a keen understanding of what it means to be marginalized. He draws on his experiences very effectively in his intellectual and community work. His major research focus is one that resonates with his own life story, the economic and racial inequalities that impact crime and the criminal justice system. Dino also volunteers with Project Rebound, an innovative program on our campus that reaches out to people in prisons and provides support for formerly incarcerated students on campus. In the fall, Dino begins his studies in the prestigious sociology PhD program at UCLA, where he plans to design and conduct research about the methods of social support that are most helpful to formerly incarcerated people as they re-enter society. Dino, as you can see, embodies our university's mission of combining scholarship with community engagement. His experience overcoming adversity to achieve academic excellence is truly inspirational. Please join me in congratulating Dino and best wishes for your continued success. I am now pleased to introduce my colleague, Daniel Bernardi, the Interim Dean of the College of Liberal and Creative Arts, who will present the faculty representatives and honor students from the College of Liberal and Creative Arts. Daniel. Thank you, Dean Alvarez. I would like to introduce the department chairs and faculty members representing the academic departments and programs of the College of Liberal and Creative Arts. They are George Leonard, American Studies and Humanities. Gail Dawson, Art. Steve Kovacs, Cinema. Alexandra Pappas, Classics. Christina Sabi, Communication Studies. Shirin Komanhamdi, um, um, Comparative and World Literature. Tony Morosevich, 
creative writing, Sylvan Lynn, design and industry, Nelson Graff, English language and literature, Bernice Lemertron on stage, foreign language and literature, Chris Chuckery, history, Lucia Volk, international relations, Venice Wagner, journalism, Tanya Osberg, liberal studies, Shelley Wilcox, philosophy, James Martell, political science, Ronnie Washington, theater arts, Julieta Wa, women and gender studies. Please join me in saluting this amazing, talented group of faculty. You may be seated. Those students accorded high academ uh, academic honors from the College of Liberal and Creative Arts are, and feel free to applause, hoot after each student. I'm going off script. <laughs> I've learned. In anthropology, Jacqueline Jernay. <laughs> In communication studies, Joshua Godar. Odalissa Mandrew. Stand up, please. Yes. Sherry metzger and Patrick Zucker. In comparative literature, Elizabeth Chan Lee. In creative writing, Megan Rose Foster. Janie No and Katrina Yukonanis. In dance, Leisha Alana Zieber. In English, Shonshini Anderson. In foreign language and literature, majoring in French, Nassim Golabi. Majoring in Italian, Carlo Pudolo. In history, Miles Culpepper. Aaron Hitchcock. In humanities, Tobin Galang. In industrial design, Celine Pestrude. In international relations, John Sanza. In journalism, Danielle Patanu. Sorry if I killed that name. In liberal studies, Gerard Geronimo. In music, Enrique Rojas. In political science, Elizabeth Riley Chucky. In women and gender studies, Suzanne Leitz. <laughs> I love it. Please join me in congratulating these outstanding students. The following students have been selected by the departments and programs to receive special recognition for excellence in their respective field. Again, kindly applaud and hoot after each student. That's written right there. Isis Ming Ho, Anthropology. Jonna Alfred, Art. Ann Ross, Cinema. Kimberly Patton, Classics. Patrick Zucker, Communication Studies. Elizabeth Chan Lee, Comparative and World Literature. Janine No, Creative Writing. Marlon Jaramillo, Design and Industry. Kira Hamilton, English Language and Literature. Carlo Padulo, Foreign Language and Literature. Miles Culpepper, History. Tobin Galan, Humanities. 
Eduardo Gonzalez, International Relations. Danielle Partnu, Journalism. Gerard Geronimo, Liberal Studies. Leisha Alana Zieber, Music and Dance. Sarah Joglin Lewington, Philosophy. Horace Carinio Bauer, Political Science. Rebecca Rattay, Theater Arts. And finally, Erica Elise Hayes, Women and Gender Studies. You may be seated. <clears throat> I am especially honored to introduce the undergraduate Hood recipient for the College of Liberal and Creative Arts, Eduardo Gonzalez. He is receiving his bachelor's degree in international relations and political science with a minor in Middle East and Islamic studies. Born and raised in the San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles, Mr. Gonzalez is a first-generation college student. He came to SF State in 2001 and has been an exceptional student focused on social movements, civic engagement, and immigration. As a first-generation Mexican-American, he was interested in understanding how the political processes worked in his city and then sought to understand how societies functioned in other parts of the world. During his four years at State, he lived in San Jose, Costa Rica for a summer while volunteering at an orphanage, and studied abroad in Istanbul, Turkey for a year. Mr. Gonzalez lived in Turkey during some of the largest protests in Turkey's recent history, witnessing oppressive state responses. These experiences formed the basis of his thesis, political participation in democratizing Turkey. He has been an exceptional student, winning a Middle East and Islamic Studies Student Excellence Scholarship. After graduation, Mr. Gonzalez returned to Turkey on both a U.S. Department of State Critical Language Scholarship and a U.S. Fulbright. He intends to enroll in a Ph.D. program in the fall of 2006 and hopes to return to San Francisco State as a professor. So do I. Eduardo, we are so proud of your accomplishments and wish you nothing but the best in the future. Congratulations. Now, to present the faculty representations and to honor outstanding students from the College of Science and Engineer, uh, Engineering, I yield the podium to my friend, Dean Sheldon Axler. Thank you, Dean Bernardi. The chairs and faculty from the College of Science and Engineering here tonight are Kimberly Tanner, Biology, on the stage, Jane DeWitt, Chemistry and Biochemistry, Dragudin Petkovic, Computer Science, David Dempsey, Earth and Climate Sciences, Zhao Shu Jiang, Engineering, Jerry Davis, Geography and Environment, David Ellis, Mathematics, Joseph Barranco, Physics and Astronomy, Ryan Hal, Psychology. It has truly been my honor to work with such outstanding faculty. Thank you. Those students accorded high academic honors from the College of Science and Engineering are in Atmospheric and Oceanic Sciences, Yi Lin Lu. In Biochemistry, Sui Jin Chu. In Biology, with a concentration in Physiology, Crystal Chan. And Stephanie Marie Ong. In geography, 
Delilah Juliet Pankowitz. Good job. <laughs> In mathematics, Jinghi Huang. Lisha Alana Zieber. In mechanical engineering, Britt Hendrickson. In psychology, Rachel Gonzalez. Takashi Hayashi. Rachel May Herb. Eric Nestigan. Sikla Lee Padilla. Jalen Panero. Congratulations to these wonderful students. Following students have been selected for special recognition as departmental honorees. Pingdui Sam, Biology. <laughs> Sui Jin Chu, Chemistry and Biochemistry. <laughs> Dailan King, Computer Science. <laughs> Yilin Liu, Earth and Climate Sciences. Nijala Maharjan, Engineering. <laughs> Delilah Juliet Pankowitz, Geography and Environment. <laughs> Cheng Ji Huang, Mathematics. Congratulations, students. I now have the great honor of introducing Yi Lin Liu, the undergraduate hood recipient for the College of Science and Engineering. Ms. Liu is graduating magna cum laude with a BS in atmospheric and oceanic sciences with a concentration in meteorology. Ms. Liu studied transportation at a vocational college in her hometown of Shanghai, China, before coming to SF State in the fall of 2010 at the urging of her father, who is in the audience tonight. I know many of you have come from far away to honor your students, but perhaps um, Ms. Liu's father has traveled the furthest. He came here tonight to be here uh, with us tonight uh, and also tomorrow at graduation. So thank you for being here. She immediately excelled. <laughs> Ms. Liu immediately excelled in calculus, physics, chemistry, and meteorology. Dr. David Dempsey, chair of our Department of Earth and Climate Sciences and her research mentor, ranks Ms. Liu in the top two of all students in the history of the meteorology program and the best student in his 25 years at SF State. He, he added that for many years he had wanted to undertake an ambitious weather forecast modeling project for the Bay Area, but not until he began working with Ms. Liu in 2013 did he find a student with the abilities to tackle the project with him. He and Ms. Liu asked whether or not a state-of-the-art computer forecast model configured to calculate 48-hour forecasts at a level of spatial detail never before done systematically for the Bay Area might make better forecasts of temperature than the National Weather Service. They installed, configured, and began running such a model four times a day, month after month, gathered and analyzed hourly weather observations from 90 Bay Area weather stations over that period, and evaluated three million of the model's temperature forecasts statistically. Ms. Liu found, surprisingly, that the model's forecast errors vary systematically with the time of day, and she quantified the rate at which forecast errors grow with time. Information of this sort will help forecasters improve the high-resolution model forecasts in the future. Next year, Ms. Liu will enter the doctoral program in atmospheric sciences at the University of Albany, which is part of the State University of New York, she will go there with a full scholarship, paying all her tuition and fees, and a very generous stipend. Yin Lee, we wish you all the best. Congratulations. <laughs> it's now my pleasure to welcome President Wong back to the podium for our closing remarks. Wow. <laughs> Tonight we have seen what makes this such an extraordinary university. 
We are a public university where individuals establish a higher education legacy for their families and generations to follow. And where developing the skills and talents of our citizens builds a legacy of success for our state, our nation, and our world. Our students are as talented and as exciting a group as you will find anywhere. And their varied backgrounds, cultures, and experiences make this a far richer university. I see in this honors convocation an exceptional opportunity to make a large university just a little bit smaller, a little more personal. We heard a handful of individual stories tonight as our Hood recipients were introduced. If we had the same opportunity to learn about each student on this stage, we all would be awed by the courage, the intellectual breadth, their accomplishments, and perseverance we would see in each and every one of them. This has been, as you all have experienced, an evening of celebration, of shared delight, some of the most creative hoots and calls I have heard in years. <laughs> that is what makes San Francisco State special. For the friends and family of our students, I hope that you got a glimpse of how we make the magic happen right here. Let me ask you once again to celebrate these outstanding students, soon to be graduates, who have made this such an inspiring evening. Now, I'd like to ask the students to stand up. You know, for a president, it's one time of year that I could ask students to do something and they did it all at one time. Thank you. So stay up. Stand up. I'm ad-libbing. My aides are probably deep breathing right now. I have a reason for asking these students to stand, and that reason is you, the friends and relatives, family members, children, and parents who are here tonight. As you have heard, many of our honor students would not have been successful without your steadfast support. Therefore, it seems only appropriate for all of us here on stage, our honor students and our faculty seated in the audience, to salute all of you, the families, friends who have guided and encouraged these incredible students throughout the years. So will our honorees and faculties please join me in a round of applause for your families. Second chance, you can sit down. <laughs> this evening's celebration does not end with this ceremony. Thanks to the University Women's Association, we sponsored our first honors convocation 36 years ago and has participated in every year since. We are all invited to a reception in Jack Adams Hall at the Cesar Chavez Student Center, and I look forward to seeing all of you there. I now ask that our guests remain seated until our honor students and faculty have left the theater, and students are re reminded to stop by Knuth Hall to pick up their award certificates before going to the reception. Our 2015 honors convocation has come to a close. As you, our honors graduates, are soon to leave us, know that you go with our love and our confidence. May tonight be just a first taste of the joys and honors to come. 
Will the members of the platform party, the honorees, and our university faculty please rise? And would the platform party please join me in exiting the stage? Thank you.